introduce a new tool, the number 48, tongue and groove plane. Number 48 will also have a sister plane, the number 49. The number 48 is designed to cut a tongue and groove in three quarter inch material. The number 49 is designed to work in half inch material. Now I'd like to talk about what these tools will do. The nice thing about the number 48 is that with one tool, you can cut both the tongue and the groove by simply rotating the fence. If the stock isn't exactly three quarters of an inch thick, the tongue and the groove will be slightly offset in the material. This isn't a problem as long as you've referenced the fence off the face side of both pieces of material. As long as you've referenced off the face side on both pieces, your joint will come together flush. If you notice that it's not flush, and this is a finished part where you can't remove material, you can add a design element, a beading, or a chamfer on the material. You may just want one of those elements for the effect. Now let's talk about the plane a little bit more. This is a very simple tool, very few moving parts, the primary one being the fence itself. In one orientation, you cut the tongue. In the other, the groove. You release the fence by lifting this spring-loaded pin. The other parts being the main body, the knob, the handle, the cap iron, and the blade itself. The blade has a slot down the center, quarter inch wide. That ensures that you achieve a quarter inch tongue. Slipping the blade over the center post, you'll find a snug fit. That ensures that the blade cuts square to the body of the tool and will leave a quarter inch shoulder when cutting the tongue piece also means that you have to sharpen the blade square. I simply use a, a 30 degree secondary bevel. That way I don't have to polish the whole primary bevel. It doesn't have a depth adjuster. It's not needed because this is a heavy removal tool. It's designed to take a lot of material quickly. A small lightweight hammer will give you all the fine adjustment you need. Now let's talk about stock prep. I've already prepared my stock. I was careful to make sure that the edge is square and straight where the joints come together. This guarantees that when I cut the tongue or the groove, I'm going to end up with a square edge. I'm not going to have a, an angle to either the tongue or the groove. That guarantees a flat surface rather than a cupped surface. The other thing that's important is that I'm referencing off the same face of the boards. I've used what's called a cabinet maker's triangle to help me orient which side of the board is my face side. When I then make my cut for the tongue or the groove, I'm referencing off one side. My marks tell me where the reference side is for when I cut the opposite side of the, of the cut. You'll notice that I reversed the direction of the grain. That's going to be okay. When everything goes together, that joint is hidden. By working off the same face, you ensure that the tongue and the groove have the same spacing off of the face side and therefore give you a flat, flush surface. Now let's cut a tongue and groove. My boards are oriented as they will be when the joints are cut. I'm using the cabinet maker's triangle so that I know which sides are my reference faces. Once the board is in the, in the vise, I'm going to take the tool and press the fence firmly against my reference side. The cut is going to start at one end and work my way back to the other. By making sure that the fence is, is flush and, and flat to my edge, I ensure that the cut will be square.
If I want to be a little more aggressive with the cut, I use a lightweight hammer to bring the cut, the blade down in depth. As I get depth into the cut, I check to make sure I'm sitting flush against the surface with the fence. You want to make periodic checks to ensure you're not coming offline. You'll notice that this center skate acts as a guide once the cut has begun. It's almost impossible once you've established the cut for it to come out of the alignment that you've established. Now we've bottomed out on the sole of the plane and that's the groove established. I'm going to switch over the boards, spinning the fence, so now I'm oriented to cut the tongue. Be careful, you're referencing the face side. When you go to make your cut, starting at the end, firm pressure against the side so everything comes out square. I have the cut established. I'm going to run through the length and check for square. If I am a little bit off, just give yourself firm pressure up against the reference side. By checking as you go, you can correct subtle changes. I've bottomed out again, ready to fit the joint. Everything was in proper alignment. You end up with a flat, clean joint. You'll find that for both small projects and one-off parts, the number 48 is both simpler to use and faster than working with a router. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.